I can't imagine, you know, if you got girls throwing your, themselves at you all the time on Instagram and you're in a little bit of a stressful situation because everybody says you suck at football all the time and there's a hot blonde chick who's just blowing you up all the time saying, come hang out with me, sending pictures to you and everything else. Like, I, it, it takes an impressive caliber of dedication to be able to resist that. So I just assume that pretty much every pro athlete, again, what did Chris Rock say? A man's as faithful as his option. Yeah. Most pro athletes have pretty good options, especially if you're a quarterback. I, so I, it doesn't surprise me, uh, but it's obviously an ugly situation for him to blow up like this. That's Clay Travis on the show. We'll get to that. Uh, we'll get to that momentarily. Also, there is an update from Brazil. Um, and it's not that Blanca has electrocuted Zangief. No, it is something else to do with the green-haired Ryan Lochte. So we'll get to that. But not only is it Yacht Rock Thursday to D, always excited that it is Thirsty Thursday with our good friends at Bad Wolf Brewing Company. They have delicious beer, and they've uh, brought some in here for us. Jeremy, the owner, is here. And Mark, the now let me see if I get this title right. Cask Master? Taskmaster is 100% Dude, correct. Sounds like a supervillain. <laughs> I feel like you should be with the Suicide Squad. Uh, no, I'd be in a good movie. <laughs> no. How bad was that pile of garbage? The fact that you start and they're like, the re main reason, the problem with the movie is they're like, Suicide Squad's got to go do stuff. And it's right. like, Suicide Squad created the problem. Let's never address that. Well, also, um, if we're going to have the two most interesting characters in our entire universe, that being the Joker and Batman, the decision to... I don't know, knock out their parts five minutes into the film and then never see them again. Probably should have used some reviewing. Yeah, it's just like, no, we don't need those guys. Oh, it was so frustrating. Um, boys, good to have you back. Uh, and, good, and great to have you back this time because you brought one of my favorite types of beer, and that is a sour. I believe it is the Mother Pucker Sour Ale. We're enjoying some of it right now. Um, Jeremy, when you are doing a sour, I don't know if people know this, you got to kind of take it seriously, right? Because there's things involved that can get in the other beers. It's like a whole process, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it is. We, we do we do sours a little bit differently. We do kettle sours, which means that we get to kill off all that stuff after we're done souring the beer. Okay. So basically, we put in our uh, microbes that sour the beer, cr create the lactic acid, and then we boil it for two hours to kill everything off and then ferment it with normal yeast. So, so what, what you're saying sounds disgusting, and I understand that people, when they hear this <laughs> about sour beers, they don't understand. Um... I love them, and I've been lucky because I've loved them from the jump. So I've, I haven't had to kind of ingratiate myself into them, but my wife has trouble with them, so I'm always looking like, oh, maybe you can try this uh, cranberry goza. Like, maybe we can get you into this world. I feel like this beer is a great gateway into the sour world. Yeah, it's the, the, the lacto lactobacillus that we use. It doesn't give it that, like, funky, like, horse blanket flavor that you get out of some Brett beers, Brettanomyces, which is a wild yeast. We'll do Brett stuff in the future, but we have to have separate uh, machinery for that because that stuff is very resilient, hard to get out. If it gets in, it ruins all your beer. It's literally the only beer my mom has ever liked. Really? That I've made. That's so sad. <laughs> I've been making beer uh, like mom, in my private life <laughs> or at the brewery for like five years. Right. And she's still just like, she had that one. She's like, mm, I like this one. It's like, yeah. I can relate right. to that, Mark, because my mom will call me in the middle of the show, and I've done this shift now for like seven years, and she'll just call back, what are you doing? And I'm like, same thing I've been doing for the past seven years. Please don't call me in the middle of the show. Um, but if people are like, I feel like they get intimidated. Like, I feel like they think that when they hear sour, like, ooh, they have a very... And, and I, I said this, I love um, the brewery, which is out in, I think, San Diego. Mm -hmm. And they just, they're known for their sours. And they have, like, a club where you have to go out there and pick it up. And they have one called Ode Tart, which I love. But if, if you just pour that for somebody that isn't necessarily hip to what's going on with sour beer, it overloads them. It destroys their palate. And I think that people have that experience and don't want to revisit it when they really should. Yeah, it's the... the some of the we've had some of the stuff from the brewery too and and some of their sours are milder than others and i find i like those but the really intense brett sours yeah you're right if you put somebody into that that's never had a sour right. they're going to be turned off of sours forever you could work up to that and that's a really good beer to try but something like the mother pucker which is just lacto it's a clean kind of sweet tart sour rather than the funky brett sour so it's I, it's worth a try i'm not a sour drinker but I love that motherfucker. So. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's a shirt. He loves that motherfucker. He doesn't have a shirt that says that. You absolutely should. We, we, well, yeah. Um, That's a good idea. Here's another thing that I wanted to ask you about. Like, there's so many, um, there's so many trends in brew brewing and IPAs, of course, are blowing everybody's socks off forever. And then everybody was barrel aging everything. 
Um, and then it's fruit infused everything. There's like a whole sour culture, is there? I mean, there's people that are just obsessed with these things. Is it difficult to try to cater to all that and also keep up with everything else you're doing inside the business? I don't think we're really trying to cater to the, the sour culture because the, the people that are really into sours are going to go more for the stuff like from the brewery, right? The Brett beers, the really intensely flavored, sour, funky, earthy stuff. Whereas this is more of like a sweet tart thing. So we're, we're kind of just doing whatever we want to do. And we all kind of decided that we liked the idea of doing a, a, a lacto rested wit. Mm. And that's kind of where this all started was just doing a sour wit for an event. And it was good enough that we decided we're going to bring it on full time. So that's great. Now, um, I believe that we were talking about it, Mark, you're responsible for the, the thunder punch. Is that true? That is quite correct. Yeah. You brought me some and, uh, God, it's, it's like having something that is got flavor that you can still when it's really hot out i always there's these crap beer nerds you guys probably have to deal with them way more than i yeah. do but if you're not drinking a double ipa sitting on the beach they're calling you horrible names that they shouldn't and i'm like man when it's really hot out i want something refreshing i don't mind a little fruit influence i don't mind you doing some things with it i want to be able to drink seven or eight of them and we had some of that last week that was that's the perfect beer for this time of year certainly better than all the Oktoberfest and pumpkin beers <laughs> i'm seeing already uh, that beer literally came from two years ago. I was at Red Derby for a birthday party, and I saw a shandy on the that they had in a can, and I was like, "Yeah, that sounds good. I want yeah. a shandy," and it tasted like lemon pine salt. And I was like, "Nope, this is gross." Yeah, mm. that happens a lot. And I was like, "I <laughs> want a beer that tastes like a beer first and foremost." But you know, I, you can have some lint, lemon, a little bit of ginger, like something happening. It doesn't just have to be. You don't just have to water down beer. So it's. That's the thing about the Thunder Punch. It's a full-on beer, and we let it completely finish fermenting, and then zested like a hundred lemons and chopped up twenty pounds of ginger and threw it in there and let it go. That was Great. a sight to see Mark with a <laughs> table full of lemons in front of him, and <laughs> pounds of ginger. It was something. That else. must have smelled amazing. It did yeah. smell amazing. It yeah. looked like a daunting task, though. <laughs> it certainly does. Uh, so you guys have a bottle release coming up, actually, tomorrow. Is that true? We do. Yeah, we're we're putting out the Sage Wisdom, actually, which is a. a Kind of a collab we did with a local company in Manassas. They designed the label and kind of came up with the idea for the beer. We brewed it and bottled it, and we're releasing that at uh, Little Bad t tomorrow night at tomorrow afternoon at three. That's awesome. So a nice wit with a good sage flavor to it. Hmm. That sounds good. delicious. Uh, are you gonna drink any of these beers, Russell, or are you too intimidated? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, right, I stepped enough. out at the wrong time. I was you also made. By I was the hoping way. I didn't lose my uh, invitation. He like, was so inspired last time, boys, that he made dip for just today for you guys coming uh, in. You guys have to have some of this dip because Dukes hasn't tried any of it yet, and I keep trying to convince I'm everybody to, to try it. I think everybody's it. afraid to criticize me or criticize it, I'm, so they I'm don't game want to it. try. I don't know about the criticism. But nobody, so nobody's so afraid to criticize. If you don't Russell. like it, you you can tell me. Nobody's afraid. So that. That's some Jesse's girl. All right. That's our. I, I, can I? Can you? Is there any way I can try? Wh wh which one was the one that you were just talking about? The uh, Thunder Punch? No, no. This is oh, for me. Oh, you had Thunder Punch oh, last week. You did. Oh, jerk did I have face? Thunder Punch? No, I thought I had another one. Try the sour. I want to see right. a man up. Oh, no, that's <laughs> uh, Jesse's girl. I'm pouring him a sour as well. He's going to drink both. You know that? Let's get him nice and lubed up. I've never seen Chris Russell with a buzz on. I think it'll make the show much more constructive. So, I mean, I got to say, I, I, I'm not just saying this just to, you know, be nice to you guys. Every. Like IPA out of a bottle, whatever that I've had, just taste funky and weird. Everything that I've tried from you guys so far is ridiculously smooth and not like, and not like, I don't know, burnt or sour or really sour burnt. or not burnt, but make a you list know, of these like, beers you're buying. So you, not, like, overly like, you, bitter, you, right? Yeah, overly bitter. Right, right, that, right. That's probably the best. And 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 I don't know if you guys try and do you purposely try and avoid that overly bitter taste, or is that is the bitter tasting beer a big thing in the craft beer community that a lot of people yeah. really relate to? Bitter beer is a big thing. Well, IPAs generally a big thing, right? right? But even even just other American styles tend to be a bit more bitter. Um, and we do we do IPAs we do bitter beers, mm -hmm. um, but I, I like to drink beers that are a little bit uh, how do you say balanced I guess. This is um, insane. 
Yeah, that, whatever that's, this is. That's Jesse's, Jesse's Girl. Jesse's that's Girl. our number one beer. I mean, oh. we sell more of that than everything else combined. I mean, it's in that's Jiffy the, Lube Live right now. Jiffy Lube Live, exactly. I mean, who doesn't need a Jesse's Girl? You might. Oh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hey, you you might want to look into Russell. If you're having trouble with the bottle beers, you might want to look into like going to a brewery and getting a growler filled. I mean, you might enjoy that whole process. Dukes, I'll bring anytime, you. Would you like a growler? I will. No, I want to go with you. You can come with me. I'd I love to go with you. Board. I mean, come on. We'll go this weekend. Yeah, sure. Seriously, we'll uh, send you an invitation. We'll give you the VIP tour. Look know. at that. Yeah. Beautiful. Huh? You're treated That'd like the way you deserve, Russell. Uh, like Bad that. Wolf Brewing Company. Ugh. Dot com. Bad Wolf Brewing Company. Dot com, and they are the sponsors of Thirsty. Thursday, check out their four flagship beers, the Mango IPA, Aces High, Jesse's Girl, and the Mother Pucker, which I just drank and caught a quick buzz off of. Uh, boys, great to see you. Thank you so much again for doing this, and Thank really you, happy guys. to be partnered up with you guys. Thank you for having Thanks us. For having us. Bad awesome. Wolf, baby. Hashtag VA Beer. Represent. All right. Um, when we come back, uh, we will discuss more about stupid Ryan Lochte. There is an update. Also, Kevin Costner joins us on Chad Dukes vs. the World at 5 o'clock. Yes, you heard that right. You are- 